Hello there and welcome to School of the Spirit, a program that brings you into insight and depth in the operations of the realm of the Spirit. I've always said it that God is Spirit and if we must know Him, we must know Him within the frame of His reference, within the context of His uh, civilization. So, if you want to know a God that is spirit, you must understand and know him within the, f the, the realm that he operates, which is spirit. And because we are born of the spirit, we've been given the privilege to interact, interface, and explore the realm of the spirit. I welcome you once again to School of the Spirit. I want to share with us a, a little thought on prayer just two basic but very powerful points that would help you now for a while uh, we've been talking about prayer and again and again and again there there are so many things we are going to talk about but the reason why we're taking time to dwell on prayer is because truly truly uh, prayer is one of the fundamentals one of the foundational units for every spiritual experience that a believer will have and so it is important that we lay the foundation properly before we begin to explore other truths all right every truth and every revelation that comes from god most times is disclosed on the platform of prayer so we need to understand the dynamics of this economic this kingdom economic system called prayer and I want to just share with you some facts um, that will help you to gain mastery in prayer. All right. God wants us to gain mastery in the things of the Spirit. Uh, come to a, a very uh, 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 um, strategic level of competence so we can understand and um, understand how the realm of the spirit operates god wants us to gain mastery in prayers and i just want to share two points with you that will help you first of all i'd like you to know that prayer is sourced and sustained by two things of course the source of it in determines is sustenance now prayer is sourced effective prayer consistent prayer fervent prayer is sourced and sustained by two things number one a will to pray and number two the power of the holy spirit paul said in first corinthians chapter 14 and in verse 15 i like to read it out loud for you so you can hear it if you want to pray effectively gain mastery in the place of prayer and be consistent then you need to embrace these two points in first corinthians 14 verse 15 it says what is the conclusion then i will pray with the spirit and i will also pray with the understanding I will sing with the spirit and I will also sing with the understanding. If you truly want to become consistent in communicating with God in prayer, if you want to pray effective prayers, prayers with heavy impact, prayers capable of commanding change, then you must understand that the source of prayer is a will to pray. You would have thought that it is God who inspires or moves you to pray. Yeah, there are moments when God actually initiates the, the thought in us to pray. And the reason is because God knows that we are in flesh. In as much as we are born of the Spirit, we are in flesh. And so the Spirit has His desires and the flesh has its desires. And most often, we tend to fall on the path of the flesh so and the flesh does one of the desires of the flesh is not to pray so god knows it's not natural in our human state to pray and that's why he initiates the desire in us 
Remember in Philippians 2.13, the Bible says, It is God who is at work in us both to will and to do. Now, since it takes an act of your will to pray, God can influence your will by giving you an idea or a thought that reminds you it's time to pray. However, you will need to make up your will. You will need to decide as an act of your will that I will pray. Many people feel that they have to be led or they have to feel something or they have to, um, an impulse has to be generated in them to pray. Or many people feel that, you know, that the things of the spirit, that the things of God has to be externally orchestrated. But you may not be correct if you go along that school of thought. You need to exercise your will to pray. If you want to speak to somebody, you don't just wait till they speak back to you. No, you have to decide to engage them in a conversation and then their response becomes the feedback. So you need to develop a will to pray. You need to decide as an act of your will to create a routine of prayer. Because if you don't create a routine, you will never be consistent. You will never be commitment. Your commitment is always demanded by a routine. So it is an act of your will that will drive you into creating a routine of prayer, a time of prayer, days of prayer, certain months of the year when you spend time to pray, places where you separate yourself to uh, in order to pray. It takes an act of your will to pray. Psalms 18 verse 3 says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. I will call upon the Lord. He says, so shall I be saved. So even the prayer that commands deliverance, the prayer that commands result, it will be an act of your will to pray. Just because God knows that you need deliverance doesn't mean he's simply going to send deliverance your way. No. You will need to by an act of your will demand for it place a request for it in john 16 verse 24 jesus said before now you have not asked ask and receive that your joy may be filled god is waiting for us to initiate the exercise of prayer to initiate moments of prayer to initiate and i tell you the truth you know there's a story of peter in the bible in acts chapter 10 peter was hungry uh, while he was at Joppa. But while they were getting the food ready, I, I, I felt he was already disappointed that the food wasn't ready by that time. So in order not to waste the time, the Bible says he went on the house top to pray. God didn't tell him to pray. He went there as an act of his will. Maybe God had influenced him, but he made the decision to go to pray. Just like when God wakes you up at certain times of the night or when God stops you within the activity of a day, to pray the best god can do is bring the initiate initiative to your heart but you need to decide that i will pray not because i feel like praying not because i feel spiritual at the moment not because i'm in a good mood but i decide to pray because it is necessary and then it will lead you to the next point i said prayer is sourced and sustained by two things number one the will to pray and number two the power of the holy spirit the power of the holy spirit is now released when you exercise your will to pray in romans 8 26 to 27 the bible says the spirit helps our infirmities our weaknesses and among the many weaknesses we have it tells us that we don't know what to pray for as we ought so even in prayers we are lost except the spirit helps us and he helps us by making intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered in another translation it says with inutterable speech inaudible speeches so when we decide as an act of our will to pray the power of the holy spirit is released as our empowerment to sustain the exercise of prayer god knows that you will need spiritual strength to be sustained on an adventure to be consistent on an exercise and so he releases the power of the holy spirit the spirit gives us the utterance the spirit gives us the burden to pray the focus to pray 
a direction in prayer what god will have you attend to part time and this is the reason why i would always advise that it is a healthy exercise for you to spend regular moment praying in the spirit this is how you tap into god's divine direction by his spirit this is how you can tap into the burden that god releases in our heart to pray and even the utterance to pray in zechariah chapter 12 and in verse 10 the bible speaks of god releasing to us or pouring out to us a powerful dimension of his spirit he says and i will pour on the house of david and on the inhabitants of jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication grace and supplication in other words an empowerment a divine ability from god that helps us to stay consistent and to achieve results in the place of prayer he says i'll pour out on the inhabitants of jerusalem and you and i have come to mount zion that's what the bible says in hebrews chapter 12 the bible calls mount zion the heavenly jerusalem so god pours out on us the spirit and the grace for supplication and this is the the grace that empowers our spiritual senses to pop open so we can interact with god and the realm of the spirit in prayer so prayer is outsourced and sustained by two things the will to pray and the power of the holy spirit and finally prayer is one of the primary spiritual exercise that makes one a spiritual heavyweight you want to be a spiritual heavyweight you need to engage the exercise of prayer naturally there are three major things that leads to a good life for you to live a good and healthy life there are three major things or primary things that you must engage number one rest number two exercise number three diet the word of god is spiritual diet first peter 2 verse 2 says we should desire sincerely uh, the milk of the word so that we can grow the word of god is your spiritual nutrition it's the food you need for your spirit to grow rest is a reality that is captured within the presence of god every time you experience the presence of god you experience rest spiritually but exercise is fundamentally prayer your spirit as much as it needs food it also needs exercise that exercise is prayer the prayer of speaking in tongues and praying in the spirit it truly exercise your spiritual muscles if you want to have a good body built and want to stay in shape you really need to keep hitting the gym to exercise the same way your spirit too can experience spiritual exercise when you consistently formulate the habit of praying in tongues that's why paul said i will pray it's a decision i will do it continually you keep exercising your spirit let me tell you something when we speak in tongues the bible says we are speaking mysteries these mysteries are secrets that are coming from the depths of god things that eyes cannot see ears cannot hear and cannot enter the heart of men these we are importing spiritual realities from another realm into our realm we are importing diverse possibilities from the realm of god into our very space into our very lives that's why you will over time if you keep the habit of consistently playing and praying in the spirit you will experience transformation not just spiritually but including your mental state and even physically things begin to change around you because you are tapping into realms that are beyond the natural these realms are governed by energy levels civilizations that are beyond our world our space and then it metamorphoses you into a higher and a more superior version of yourself so if you want to be a spiritual heavyweight you must develop the exercise of prayer in acts chapter 6 verse 4 the disciples said we will give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the world we will give ourselves to we will commit ourselves to it because this is how you become a heavyweight spiritually 
you keep exercising your prayer muscles till you become a giant in the spirit there is so much potential in your spirit to absorb things to experience divine revelations to tap into realms that are beyond the natural to to experience the energy levels that govern dimensions in the spirit to become a sign and a wonder all of this will happen when you become a heavyweight but it only happens when you develop the exercise of prayer in jude chapter 1 verse 20 i'll read it in amplified translation so we have a better understanding of it jude chapter 1 verse 20 says but you beloved build yourselves up founded on your most holy faith it says build yourself now make progress rise like an edifice higher and higher praying in the holy spirit so how do you build yourselves your spirit of course by praying in the holy spirit it says you keep going from one level to the next when you begin to hit the gym the first one two weeks you don't really ex see any change at all but you begin to feel in your body somebody told me one time that once you begin to feel the pains it means your muscles are beginning to expand all right so as you keep staying many of you watching me right now you have been tarrying in the place of prayer for months for years and you may not have seen any physical change but i like you to know that you have evolved you have experienced a change you are not the person you were when you started it's only a matter of time when you begin to see certain possibilities perhaps god is waiting for you to mentally mature to handle the expression of power that is about to be revealed through you because absolute power may corrupt sometimes you need a lot of discipline to learn to bring under control the power the authority of god that will manifest through you or some other times god wants you to mature in your word content but i definitely tell you that there is a change that has already happened in your spirit there are portions of your spirit that has been opened up in as much as your spirit is a whole person there are aspects of your spirit that can be manifested just like your body has different systems and each of these systems have their potential uh, uh, duties functions in the body so also your spirit has different systems at work in it operational systems that can help you explore the realm of god it takes an experience in the realm of the spirit to understand what i'm saying right now so if you want to be a spiritual heavyweight develop time to pray pray in the spirit fervently two things will happen when you become a spiritual heavyweight you can withhold and withstand the evil storms of the enemy the storms of life and the enemy the attacks of the enemy you can withstand and withhold the bible says having done all to stand the 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 the, the, the reaction of people when they are under adversity when they are under attack spiritually when they are behind enemy lines will tell you the strength of their prayer life and number two when you become a spiritual heavyweight you generate maximum impact god can do so much with you when you become a spiritual heavyweight a lot of impact jesus was a man of prayer again and again he will often withdraw himself to pray in fact in luke chapter 6 the bible says in verse 12 that he prayed all night and when he came down from the mountain he stood on the plain and the multitude surrounding the bible says from 17 to 19 there about that they sought to touch him because virtue flowed out of him he generated so much energy that there was power being released to bring healing to people there is no man no man generating maximum impact for god for the kingdom of heaven that is not a creature forged by prayer spend time with god in prayer keep at it one day two days one week two weeks one month one year make it a lifestyle and watch the spiritual heavyweight 
you will become. When you become a spiritual heavyweight, God can bring the salvation of eternity through you. God can, like Jesus, anoint you with the Holy Ghost and with power and make you go around doing good, bringing men and women out of the oppression of the enemy. And I pray in the name of Jesus that the will to pray will be inspired in you from today. The appetite to pray be released in you. And may you experience the empowerment of the Spirit in the place of prayer. You will no longer slumber. You will no longer fall asleep like the disciples did at the Garden of Gethsemane. You will experience strength beyond your natural abilities. In the name of Jesus, and I may God make you a spiritual heavyweight for his kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I love you and thank you so much for staying tuned to this broadcast. Do well to subscribe if this is your first time. Share this video with somebody who needs to be blessed and tell us in the comment section how these videos as well as others have edified you. I'll see you in the next series on School of the Spirit. God bless you and bye for now.